Hey guys, Harsh here and welcome back to Technolog. This is it. This is the OnePlus Nord. Finally got it after waiting a long, long time. I decided to cancel my Amazon order because it was taking a very long time and instead I bought this phone offline. It was a great decision, probably the best decision of my life to buy this offline so that I can bring awesome content for you guys of the OnePlus Nord. Now anyway, the phone is here and I'm really happy about it. Now while I was at the offline store, I ran into Sagar from Techworks and thank god I ran into him. So the offline store had a catch. They said that we have to unbox the phone right over there because people buy the sealed boxes and then sell them outside for a higher price point because this phone has a lot of demand. So it makes sense to unbox the phone right over there and I'm really glad that I ran into Sagar from Techworks. He had a camera and he helped me shoot the unboxing over at the store. Now without wasting any more time, let's go to OnePlus Experience Store and let's see how the experience was at the OnePlus Experience Store. Alright, welcome back to the studio. That was the unboxing experience at the OnePlus Experience Store and it was one hell of an experience. The guys over at the store were really helpful. They allowed us to shoot in these situations where they can allow only a certain people inside the store. So a huge shout out to them. Now anyway, OnePlus Nord is here and if you ask me, my first impressions about this phone are really good. As soon as I unboxed the phone and held it in my hand for the very first time, I instantly realized that it is a premium phone. It did not feel cheap at all. In fact, it gave me the almost same feeling as I got with the OnePlus 8 and that says a lot about this phone. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are going to ask about the plastic frame. Honestly, if someone did not tell me that it is a plastic frame, I wouldn't even realize that it is a plastic frame. So the plastic frame did not bother me. Obviously, it would have been better to have metal because metal is more premium than plastic but it did not make a difference at least to me. Anyway, moving along, let's talk about that beautiful display. So the OnePlus Nord comes with a full HD plus 90Hz AMOLED display. For this price point, the display is very good. The colors are punchy, it gets bright enough, the viewing angles are good and the 90Hz refresh rate is excellent. So I'm really glad that OnePlus went with a 90Hz AMOLED display on the OnePlus Nord. They have not cut corners at least with the display. Now this phone is a budget phone, it is not a flagship killer like the OnePlus One was. So do not confuse it with a flagship killer, it is a budget phone. So when a company makes a budget phone, they have to cut corners to get that price down. And OnePlus has cut corners in a lot of place. Number one is the processor. The OnePlus Nord comes with a Snapdragon 765G processor, which is not a flagship level chipset, it's a mid-range chipset. But honestly, I did not notice any difference, at least in day-to-day -day usage. I did try to play PUBG on this phone, which maxes out at Smooth and Ultra. I wish that it had Smooth Extreme so that I could get that 60 FPS, but that update will be coming later according to OnePlus. So I'm hoping that the 60 FPS update comes soon. But yeah, apart from that, normal usage on the OnePlus Nord is a breeze. Snapdragon 765G is more than enough for normal stuff like checking Instagram, replying to WhatsApp messages, editing photos on Lightroom, Snapseed, etc. For all these tasks, 765G is actually a good processor. A big part of OnePlus phones is their software, Oxygen OS. Oxygen OS is the main reason for OnePlus's success. Once you use Oxygen OS, you will not go back to any other Android skin. And that is the main reason why this phone has so much hype. If Xiaomi launched a similar phone in terms of hardware with MIUI, 
it would not sell over 20 or 22,000 rupees. If Xiaomi launched the same phone with same hardware, but with MIUI, people would not pay 25 and 28,000 rupees. But people will pay the same amount for the OnePlus phone because of Oxygen OS. And please, if someone from Xiaomi or Realme is watching this, take a note of this. Giving a good software experience is extremely important. Okay, now let's talk about them cameras. So on the rear side, there's a quad camera setup. 48 megapixel primary camera, which is the Sony IMX586. An 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, which no one asked for, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor, which again no one asked for. So apart from the main and ultra wide angle camera, the remaining two cameras are just there so that OnePlus can claim that they have a quad camera setup. But anyway, this is not a rant for camera. We will reserve that for the full camera review. Apart from that, on the front side of things, there's a 32 megapixel main camera and an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. Now this camera is definitely useful because there are a lot of situations where not everyone fits in the selfie and for those situations having an ultra wide angle front camera is very helpful. So well done OnePlus on that part. Now as far as my first impressions go about the camera, they're very good. The camera is not bad at all. I thought that I would not like the camera but that's not the case. I actually like the camera on OnePlus Nord. It clicks some really good pictures. The dynamic range is excellent. The white balance is surprisingly good and the colors are also surprisingly good. Now this makes it a big problem for OnePlus 8 because OnePlus 8's camera is not up to the mark for its price point. OnePlus 8 starts at 42,000 rupees and for that price point, that camera is not good. But for this price point, 25,000 rupees, the OnePlus Nord has a good camera setup. Obviously, I will be testing the cameras further and I will make a dedicated camera review and also Google camera. That's why if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button below because you don't want to miss those videos. OnePlus Nord skips out on the headphone jack. I don't know why OnePlus removed the headphone jack from this phone. It was absolutely unnecessary. They could have included a headphone jack and that would have made a lot of difference because at this price point, the headphone jack does matter. So I personally don't like the fact that it does not have a headphone jack. Now this phone has an in-display fingerprint sensor which is not that fast. It is slower than the OnePlus 8 series and I can clearly see that. I have been using the OnePlus 8 for the past couple of weeks and when I shifted to the OnePlus Nord, the fingerprint sensor definitely felt slower. Also, the fingerprint sensor is placed very low on the phone. I don't know how I feel about this. It's a little uncomfortable. I would have liked it if the fingerprint sensor was a little, you know, further above, like it's very low right now. Apart from that, the OnePlus Nord has a 4100 mAh battery and it does come with 30 watt fast charging. So that is a good thing. Now again, I will test out the battery life in the upcoming days and stay tuned for future videos. Overall, as far as my first impressions go, I'm gonna say OnePlus Nord impressed the hell out of me. I am really excited to use this phone in the upcoming days and make more videos on it for you guys. That's about it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, then make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe below. It would mean the world to me. My name is Harsh Punjabi and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.